Welcome to episode 5 of my 6.9 episode series where I discuss 69 Xbox 360 games that are going up in value. Prices are rising. The Xbox 360 is tearing higher with every day and every month and every year that passes. But it's still early days, guys. The Xbox 360 is nothing. The prices are very, very cheap in comparison to other consoles. Every console hits these stages. It's just a matter of time and timing. When the people that grew up on these consoles get older and they have disposable income, that's when they begin that first wave. And that's what we have already started. I mean, this started back in about 2019, 2020 is when the 360 PS3 really started to take off. And here during this series, we are talking long-term prices, not short-term moves. Short-term moves are meaningless. When somebody says, oh, look at the prices, they're down 15% this year. Okay. So, did you look at the, the chart? Is the trend still up? Because when I look at a $10 game, a game that used to be $10, and I see it at $100, and then you say, well, look at it, the price is going down, it's going to crash, it's at $80 now. Do you know anything about stocks? Do you know anything about investing? Nothing goes straight up. Nothing goes straight down. Okay? Things fluctuate. They go up. They go down. They go up. They go down. What is the trend? That's all I care about. That's all we care about here on this channel. And that's what we'll be discussing. And I, I've got a list of 69 games, guys. I will have a link in the description for all the previous episodes. And the 360 is a great great console and right now is a great time to get in there's still great deals to be had out there you know i i once turned down little samson for the nes for a hundred dollars just to give you an example i turned it down for a hundred dollars because back then you know i i didn't know what i was doing and i thought oh well that's that's expensive no it wasn't expensive it, it was it was very cheap I'd give my left nut to pay $100 for that game now, today. What's it going for, like 3000 Canadian? A good, what's a good condition label going for? How about that? Every console gets $500 to $1,000 plus games. Every single console. My very first video, I gave my prediction for what I felt would be the very first 360 game to hit $500. I wasn't right. Because another game actually ended up hitting over $500 just recently. Check out my previous video for that game. But plenty more. Plenty more games are going to be going to $500. And I've got a list, a great list of some freaking absolute bangers and gems for you here today. This is one of my best lists. I save all the best games for last just about. So before we get started, make sure you're wearing an adult size diaper. I've got mine on. I'm always wearing one. When you're dealing with the kind of retro games that I deal with, it's just something that you learn to always be wearing. So let's start off strong, guys. Number one, or sorry, number 41, on our way to 69 games going up in value, we're talking Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. This is legit a movie licensed game based on the movie and what do we know about movie title games guys well what like 99 percent of them suck 99 percent of them are complete garbage and this isn't the super nintendo era back when capcom was making movie based games like aladdin one of the best games ever made super nintendo sega genesis we're not talking lion king those days are long gone. This is a 360 game. Came out in 2005. Oh, this is a friggin' early release title too. I forgot about that. Very early release title. CIB, of course. So not only is this one of the best movie-based titles ever made, but it's also a 360 exclusive. You're not going to get this on your PS3. It's an early release title that was ahead of its time. Far ahead of its time 
in terms of both gameplay and graphics for being an early release title most early release titles are are kind of garbage that's that's typical you know you don't get to see the consoles full power usually even close to full power on those launch title games especially but this game did quite well it was definitely ahead of its time great rave reviews first person shooter for the segments where you are not playing as kong and when you are playing as kong it turns into a third person perspective and i know what you're thinking you're thinking well wait a minute this game is also on gamecube ps2 so it's not really a 360 exclusive. Well, for the modern version, it is a 360 exclusive. And if you want the definitive version with the best graphics and the best sound quality, this, this is the version to get. The others are not even comparable. The others are worthless in value for a reason, because the definitive way to play this otherwise amazing game is on the 360. And what's happened with this game, this game was kind of... Although it got good reviews, it was kind of ignored, forgotten about, one could say. But as more and more people learn about this game, they're learning that this is a monster hidden gem. An absolute monster that's very quickly turning into a cult classic. If you own a 360, basically, you're going to want this game. And that's what's happening. That's why these are getting gobbled up. Let's let's pull up the chart. These are getting gobbled up for a reason, guys. This thing is rip roaring higher for a reason. We're not just talking ten dollar moves. You could have got this back in 2019, 10 bucks CIB. This is all Canadian dollars too, by the way. And also for those that aren't familiar with price charting, I'm using price charting for all these prices. The graphs are never entirely accurate they don't fully show the current price but they show the trend so as you can see look at this recent sold listing 73.99 67 dollars basically 70 dollars 70 dollars 75 dollars 70 dollars all day 75 dollars 75 dollars all day 65 dollars 60 dollars oh definitely trending higher approaching that 80 90 dollar mark this doesn't always include shipping Many times this this is easily a hundred bucks. In fact, I was eyeing one recently that was in very very good condition. Condition also plays a role. Don't forget about that piss poor condition. Yeah, you're not gonna get ninety dollars. Mint condition, frig! I'll give you ninety bucks right now, buddy. You show me mint condition one, I'll pro I have add it to the list. I've already got two copies. I'll take a third one. Sign me up. Ninety bucks. You gotta pay tax on top of that. So th these charts are are like averaging the prices together. So the chart, the chart's not going to show you the peak sale. It's just averaging the prices. We can see a nice trend up, and right now it's bouncing up and up between, you know, let's just say sixty to fifty dollars. This one down here, thirty-five dollars. That would have been piss poor condition. As you can see on the actual sold listings, yeah, let's just say between seventy-five and fifty dollars. This thing's this thing's been bouncing around. It's looking for a bottom. But if you look at the bigger trend here, I see a lot of $50, $60 sales, sometimes $80 sales coming in. What I'm really looking for is higher highs and lower lows. Unfortunately, this doesn't go back far enough, but it's obviously making higher highs and lower lows. You're not getting $35 sales anymore. In fact, the very first copy I bought of this, I paid about 30 bucks, and it was on eBay. What you want to see when a stock is bouncing up and down like this and it doesn't show it on this chart yet, but I, I think when this when we zoom out and this chart plays a little bit of catch up, this is gonna this trend's gonna look higher and it's gonna look like higher highs were being made and higher lows were being made. That's what I meant to say. Higher lows. In fact, if we look at the lows, you can see it creeping upward a little bit. Look, 31 was low, 33 is the low, 34 is the low. Higher lows and higher highs you want is what you want to see when the stock is chopping up and down like that it's continuing the trend up this being the monster freaking hidden gem that it is i do believe that this will be a 200 hundred dollar game very easily in the future so all you have to do is ask yourself if you're interested in this type of game 
you want to buy it now or do you want to buy it in the future? In the grand scheme of things, I think Kong is still fairly cheap for what it is and how good it is. Another great thing that this game has going for it is that it is backwards compatible with the Xbox One, which definitely helps in terms of how sought after a game like this would be and how popular a game like this would be. Because sometimes when games are not backwards compatible, it does hurt the price. And I'll have more on that a little bit later. Backwards compatibility is very important. The, the game did get great reviews around its time of release. We're talking about an average of 8 out of 10. And there's high replayability. There is actually an alternative ending that you can unlock that was approved by Peter Jackson himself. In fact, Peter Jackson had a, a big role in designing this game. Thanks to Peter Jackson, this game is technically required if you want the full experience from the movie because there were deleted scenes that, that didn't make the final cut of the movie that Peter Jackson made sure were put into this game. So that's a really unique feature. That's not something you see every day. This isn't just your average run-of-the-mill garbage low-budget movie game. Especially when you got Peter J Peter Jackson coming in and making sure it's not it's a freaking dang good game. He doesn't want his his uh blockbuster King Kong movie turning into Shaq Fu. He's not gonna pull a Shaq. Shaq doesn't know anything about video games. <laughs> I mean, Shaq, Shaq tried to redeem himself by making a modern Shaq Fu for the Nintendo Switch, and I'm sure it was on PS4 as well. He, he thought, oh, I'm going to redeem myself. Everyone says I, my video game's the worst game ever made. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go uh, make another one. Well, you think Shaq knows how to play video games? The second Shaq Fu sucked even more than the first one. I actually enjoy the first one. It's, it's so bad, it's good. It, you try playing that on a two-player fighting game. It's, it's terrible. Absolutely terrible, but I love it. Number 42, we got Spectral Force. This is an Atlas title, guys. Another Xbox 360 exclusive. You're going to see a lot of that today. You're not going to find this on your PS3. Get your PS3s out of here. We're talking Xbox 360 today. This is a strategy tactical RPG similar to Final Fantasy Tactics or Fire Emblem often compared to Fire Emblem in terms of gameplay so the gameplay is a series of tactical battles that is broken up with segments where you converse with your team your party and upgrade your equipment make purchases standard RPG, expand the storyline, etc. There are over 40 recruitable characters, each character unique with their own special abilities. Classic RPG stuff. And if you remember what I mentioned earlier, this is an Atlas title. And that's important in this case. So this, this is a standard RPG that got bashed to hell. People still bash it to this very day. Bash to hell, you know it had a low print run. It's not common, it's very rare. I've seen it in the wild uh, twice, and that includes private auctions. When I say wild, maybe twice. It does not come up often. I have seen it come up, but it's once in a blue moon. Absolutely, maybe once a year, maybe once every two years. Have I ever seen this come up for sale? It got bashed to hell for having poor graphics, but it did get praised for having good gameplay. So, from an RPG perspective, the gameplay is not bad. Okay? The story is not too bad either. I think it mostly got bashed because it's got terrible PS2 graphics, and, and there's kind of not much going on either with the environments. It, it kind of looks ugly, a little bit boring, plain... But it's got a lot of replayability because there are different factions and you get to choose who you're going to help faction-wise. And so, so you can change some of the outcomes a little bit. O only a little bit because there's a, a grander story. So it's not like there's 20 different endings here. Like it's all got to come together still. But, but you're going to have... Every uh, playthrough is going to be unique. 
in that regard. My experience might be different from your experience. I might choose to help certain factions, and you might choose to help other factions. So it got average to piss poor reviews. We're talking 2.5 out of 5 by GameSpy. And who was it? IGN gave it a 4.9 out of 10. But official Xbox Magazine, which I find that they've given the fairest reviews. When you look at all the old reviews and all the old 360 games, you might think, oh, the Xbox official magazine is, is giving higher reviews than they should be because it's the official Xbox magazine. But I don't think so. I think they're the only guys that actually um, gave fair reviews. Like, you, you can't go into Spectral Force 3 and expect Final Fantasy Tactics. The budgets are not the same. The people working on the, the teams are not the same. And I'm sure they didn't have as many people on the teams either. So I bring up the Atlas title because what's common with these old school Atlas titles, in particular, older Atlas titles, not so much anymore, but especially back in the day, including the 360 era, Atlas titles had low print runs. And this game here, I know for fact, is no exception. Not only that, but this is an RPG, and the Xbox 360 has very few RPGs. It is not known to be an RPG-heavy console. PS3 had far more RPGs. So, considering that RPGs are rare in general, and what do we know about RPGs in general? RPGs and horror games hold their value. I don't care how bad you say this game is. It's still an RPG. It will automa it automatically is going to hold its value. It's automatically going to continue to creep up in value. Because it's a low print run Atlas RPG. It's got the Atlas name on it. It's for a console where you don't have very many options. Um, you want to play a tactical RPG on the 360? You're picking up an Atlas title because I can only think of two offhand. Operation Darkness is the only other one offhand. And I'm going to compare it to another similar game in just a moment. So here's the chart here. Oh, it had a little bit of a bump up in 2018. Look at that. And then promptly fell back down around that 2019 time time period. Very interesting. And uh, I'll point out one thing. This kind of shows on all the charts. But as you can see, 360 games were completely dead. This is like a pretty freaking new console here, guys. And they really started to rip roar higher in about that 2019, early 2020. And that's not just because of the free money that was sloshing around. That's also just timing. That it was perfect timing for the 360 and the PS3. These are newer retro consoles. Every console before it goes through the same phase or at a certain time period after the consoles, you know, roughly 20 years old, let's just keep the math simple, or less, 15 years from the time of the console's release, you know, when did 360 come out? Uh, 2005, I think. So 15 years after 2005 would be 2020. And really, <laughs> yeah, by the time that console is 20 years older, it's going up even higher. Oh yeah, when 2025 comes around, pending, you know, some sort of black swan event, Everything's going to continue to rip roar higher. You're going to have $1,000 games. Spectral Force, you might be looking at $300, $400, $500, $500 one of these days. So here's a chart of Spectral Force. Hasn't done anything too fancy yet, but it has made its first couple of initial moves. We see it rip roared higher to about $42 on the chart, Canadian dollars. Came back down to about 20, but that might that might have been skewed by something wonky. Sometimes um, CD onlys will get mixed into the CIB category. Like, look at this one, disc and manual. Maybe this might not even include the case. Let's see what we can see scrolling down here. Okay, so a lot of fifty dollar sales. So since September, it's kind of it's flatlined around that fifty dollar level, and that's a pretty high value for a 360 game, by the way, guys. Like I said, this is early days. 50 bucks? It's, it's pretty expensive for a 360 game in comparison to most other games. But that also shows you just how rare and or uncommon the game is. Well, I think this trend will continue higher, and I like to compare it to another garbage RPG. I've, I pulled up a very specific example because I recently bought this game. 
This is Sayuki Journey West for the PS1. This, this game flatlined for years. Years and years and years. To, to have a PS1 RPG selling for about $20 in 2019, this is PS1, guys, remember. That, that's almost impossible. In fact, if I didn't see it on this chart, I wouldn't even believe you. If someone just told me, oh, I know of a Koei RPG PS1 game. Oh yeah, back in 2019, it was 20 bucks. I wouldn't believe you. Get the hell out of here. Then. <laughs> what is that? What are you, a comedian now, buddy? You trying to do stand-up comedy? Well, that's what happened with this game because it was, it's, it's not a very good RPG. But guess what? It is a Koei RPG. And it is an RPG. And it's on the PlayStation. And guess what? It's, it, it's got a low print run. This is not a common game. They didn't print one million copies of this. This is not Final Fantasy VII. This isn't Final Fantasy VIII. This isn't Final Fantasy IX. This is a unheard of, very strange, oddball, not very good RPG. But, but it's still an RPG, which means, hey, by default... If you like RPGs, you're probably going to find it at least half decent. And all of a sudden, it just exploded to the moon out of nowhere. And now it's found a nice floor around 100 bucks. Oh, look at this. One copy sold for 200. 175, 175. This is just a friggin' couple weeks ago, buddy. I'm recording this on, what is this, January 20th. This sold for $200 on January 6th because guess what? There's probably not that many on the market. And guess what? It was probably in good condition. This other one selling for $121. What was the shipping cost on that? What was the condition on that? $100? Bucks? What was the condition? Some, and was there anything else av available on the market at the time? So that sort of thing can happen to these unknown, not very good RPGs. So do you think that this one's going to $100 in the long term? Yeah, absolutely I think it is. Friggin' Atlas title, buddy. Now when will it go there? No one knows. The market decides when the market's going to make the next move. Sometimes certain things can trigger that. You know, you get a big name YouTuber mention a game that nobody previously knew about. Maybe that's what happened here with this PS1 title. I never heard of this game. I just found it. Um, somebody put it up for auction one day. I'd never heard of it prior to that. I, and I looked it up. I said, wow, look at that. An RPG and it's a Koei title. I love Koei games. This is Fist of the North Star Ken's Rage number two. Oh, look at that Koei game. Look at that. CIB. Now this is a very special game. This is the sequel to the first one, obviously. But this one is significantly better for many, many reasons. So unlike the first game, this one has split-screen two-player co-op. Two frickin' player co-op. This game is also a little bit different gameplay-wise. Plays very similar to Dynasty Warriors. You are battling giant hordes of enemies. It's just great, mindless fun. Two-player co-op, mindless fun. That, that's all it is. It's just stupid fun. If you like Dynasty Warriors, you'll like this game. It doesn't have as high of a budget, I don't think, as a Dynasty Warriors. It might not be as polished as a Dynasty Warriors, but it's still a very unique, a very rare two-player co-op game. Very, very rare. Late release came out in 2009 North America. Or sorry, 2000, 2013. Sorry. Very late release. Low print run, Koei game. Uh, Dynasty Warrior style. Mindless fun. Not only that, check out that chart. That is a beautiful, beautiful chart. It's about as good as it gets. You're not going to find a better chart. This is basically a straight line up. When you draw an arrow from point A, $17.99, to point B, $59.98, that's a straight line, and that trend will continue. This game is rare as hell. Like I said, look at this chart. 
it's showing sixty dollars, but recent sales, we're getting into the hundred dollar mark. And holy hell, this this is actually my first time looking at this chart. I'm looking at these charts live with you guys at the same time. And I paid fifty dollars for my copy what feels like maybe two years ago. And I bought my copy on eBay. I got it on eBay just like most people, because you'll never find this in the wild. I have never in my life seen this in the wild. I think it showed up in an auction group once. One frickin' time. Plenty of sales approaching that $100 mark. Wow, look at that. And you can see this trend continuing. Oh, this doesn't even sell very often either. Look at this. Barely any sales each month. Two sales in the month of December. Two freaking sales. Four, okay, five sales in November, not too bad. But let's scroll all the way down to May. So, so because there's so few sales, we can go all the way down to May, whereas when something sells like hotcakes, like uh, King Kong sells quite commonly, I think, you won't, <laughs> you'll get like a month down, maybe two months down. The, chart, the, the price charting won't show you any further. So, wow, 90 freaking dollars back then. But look at this, a lot of lower price games. 50, 50, 60, 60, 70, 60, 70, 70, 60, 70, 70, 60, 80. Now we're getting into the 80s. 80, 80, 60, 87, 84, 80, 70, 80. Higher highs and lower lows. Wow, you don't even get the 50s no more, guys. Last time you even saw the number 5 was in August of 2023. That is a beautiful... You, you don't get any better than that. This, this, game ain't, this game ain't going down in price, I can tell you that much. And like I said at the beginning, somebody might have looked at this and said, Oh, look, it was $58. It went down to, to 40 Oh, it's going to crash. The price is going down. Look, from 2021, let's just round up, 2021 to 2022, mid-2022, 20, mid roughly. Oh, the price is going to down. What do you think? It's coming back down to seventeen ninety nine? <laughs> it's never going back down to seventeen ninety nine, buddy. What's the longer term trend? And and hell, if you found if you found it in for for forty twenty five, I hope you bought it. Because guess what? That can also cause the price to go back up again when when a game a game goes up in value. Let's say something goes up to a hundred dollars and then it comes back down to seventy five. Well, there might have been a whole bunch of people waiting on the sidelines, waiting for a price dip. Just like a stock. Hey, I'm waiting for the stock to go on sale. I'm waiting for a, a better price, a better multiple. Looking for a better P.E. ratio, price to earnings ratio. I'm, you know, I'm looking for a deal. Comes down to 75, a whole bunch more people jump back in. Boom, stock goes back up to 100 bucks. So these games, although they're not stocks, they trade in a similar fashion. They have similarities. So Ken's Rage 2, Fist of the North Star, was number 43 of 69. Number 44 is yet another absolute gem. And yet another Xbox 360 exclusive. Darkest of Days. And if you know about this game, you're a real freaking OG. You are an OG Xbox 360 master. Because this is yet another game that got bashed to hell. And of course, this is CIB. So this is a first-person shooter with a time travel-related storyline going on. You travel throughout many different eras, including the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Ancient Rome. But what makes it fun and unique is that you are fighting with modern weapons. So you will have modern weapons, assault rifles, mowing down, <laughs> mowing down enemies with muskets. <laughs> so, so it's kind of unique. They tried something different. Got bashed to hell and back. It's not a AAA title. That's the other thing. If you're expecting a AAA title... And a lot of these reviewers back in the day would, would look at a game like this and be like, oh, this isn't as good as Red Dead Redemption. This game sucks. I'm going to give it a 1 out of 10. Because guess what? Somebody did give it a 1 out of 10. Destructoid gave it a 1 out of 10. IGN gave it a 4 out of 10. Team Xbox gave it a 3.8 out of 10. Got bashed to hell and back. But guess what? A lot of these games 
at the time of their release, this happened a lot. They just get bashed to hell by these so-called reviewers, but then as the game ages, and players and actual gamers go and review these titles, YouTubers, that's how we find out about these hidden gems. And that's what's happened with Darkest of Days. This is quickly turning into a cult classic, and it's gaining a cult following. As people look at this game, and they say, yeah, it's not perfect. It's got a couple bugs here or there. But it's fun, and it's funny to play. And it's, the story's not bad either. It's got a good story. They put effort into the game. It's not like this game was rushed. It's not like this game was some discount budget bin title that they were trying to uh, sell as a shovelware type of deal, like a Nintendo Wii game. Oh yeah, and look at that. Official Xbox Magazine gave it another fair score, 6.5 out of 10. That's a fair score, guys. That's like, you know, what is that, average? I'll, get, I'll say 6.57 is average. That's fair. To call it a, a AAA title is unfair to say, oh, it's a 10 out of 10. No, it's not a 10 out of 10. But you know what it is, guys? And based on this chart, as my proof, it's a rare game with a low print run. Another beautiful chart. This game used to sell for 10 bucks. July of 2020, you could have paid $10. Why didn't you pay $10? Why didn't you buy it for $10? Hell, why didn't I buy it for $10? I think I ended up paying $25. Actually, I got, I got one copy for 14 because I have uh, three copies, but one of my copies is busted. The disc was all scratched up. But lucky, uh, luckily, I was able to get my money back from the seller. But I did pay $4 trying to get it resurfaced. The store owner put it through the machine twice, and it still did not work. So I don't know if I can throw it through the machine more, multiple more times and it'll work or not. I don't know. This is another game that is very difficult to find out in the wild. I, I very rarely see this come up in the auction groups. That, that's a really good gauge tool that I have to find out just how common a game is. How often does it come up for sale? Because I'm in many, many auction groups. And this one, again, once in a blue moon. And I'm telling you right now, with a low print run and the popularity that this game is getting, some people say this is one of their like favorite games on the 360. It's that good. Combine all those factors together, do you think that this game is going to go up in value or do you think it's going to crash back down to $8.99? Do you think this trend is going to continue? Would you be interested in purchasing a game like this for 40 or 50 dollars and do you think that it could realistically double like let's say it keeps going up could it realistically go to 100 if you wait long enough could it go to 150 could it go to 200 well i'm telling you right now yeah yeah this is a great candidate for a game that could in the long term go to 200 dollars and considering a lot of people paid 10 bucks for it back in July of 2020, going from 10 to 100 is a 10 bagger. Going from $10 to 200 is a 20 bagger. That's not bad. Those people are swimming in money. Here comes the money. Here we go. You know that reminds me um I forget who wrote the comment one of one of my viewers he comments all the time. Great guy. He, he wrote a good comment in a previous video. He said, you know what? He, he had bought his Xbox 360 collection four years ago, like paid for all the games. And he said, you know what? Today, even at today's price right now, I could not afford to buy my own collection. And that's why I myself started collecting quite heavily. I wish I could remember exactly when it was, but I'll guesstimate it was 2020 when everything was cheap. Nobody wanted these freaking games. In fact, the pawn shop near my house, right up, and I'll never forget this day, right up until January of 2022. So that was the cutoff date. Prior to January 2022, they sold every single 
Xbox 360 game in that entire pawn shop, and they had a lot of games for three dollars. They had a flat. The policy was flat fee three bucks. They never looked up anything on eBay. They they never they didn't look up price charting because guess what? Everyone thought 360 games were worthless because guess what? They were you worthless for a very long time. They thought that Darkest of Days was still a nine dollar game. Their pawn shop, eh, put it up for three bucks. They pay one dollar per game. You know, if you were coming in to sell your games to them, they'd say, okay, we'll give you a buck. A buck a piece. We're not even going to look them up. We'd, we'll give you a flat fee, one dollar per game, including sports games. They will take sports games. They'll give you one dollar. They put it on the shelf, three dollars. Well, a new employee obviously came in and told them, what the hell are you doing? These games are worth a lot of freaking money. <laughs> so, so they jacked up all the prices. They use eBay prices now. You, you can't get deals. It's very difficult. Holy hell, guys. We're on to number 45. Import Tuner Challenge. Yet another Xbox 360 exclusive. You're not going to find this on your PS3. If you, if you need to change your diaper, take a moment, hit the pause button, go change your diaper. If, if that's what you need to do, now's the time. CIB. This game came out in 2006. So this game is very unique. Pay attention to this. This is titled Import Tuner Challenge. Okay. But that title is very deceptive. I don't know why they called it that. Because guess what? What this is actually called. And what series this is actually a part of. Is the Tokyo Extreme Racer series. This was the very last North American Tokyo Extreme Racer game. The Tokyo Extreme Racer series is a little bit niche. Not everybody loves the series. It gained its cl claim to fame back during the Sega Dreamcast days. In particular, Tokyo Extreme Racer number two, which was a significant improvement from number one, is where the series really took off. So remember, the title of this game is not Import Tuner Challenge. Just call it Tokyo Extreme Racer dash Import Tuner Challenge. And this is another example of a game. Terrible reviews. Absolutely terrible reviews. But also keep in mind that th this type of racing game is not for everyone. It's often compared to... Uh, it's often called an RPG racer. A lot of grinding in this game typical of that of an RPG in order to make money and purchase your upgrades. And the grinding is done in the form of racing. So that's why it's kind of called the RPG racer. So you're racing and leveling up your car, just like an RPG. <laughs> I mean, you do that in other racers too, but this one's a little bit grind heavy, I guess you could say. But guess what? Many will tell you that this is the very best Tokyo Extreme Racer game ever made. The very best. 360 exclusive. Another game? You're not going to find this very often. This is definitely an uncommon game. If not rare game. This did not have a high print run. This is not Halo 4. Very uncommon game. I barely ever see it. And usually when I do see it, I buy it. Or usually, here's the great thing about this game. You might actually be able to find this for cheap. Either on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Kijiji, Pawn Shop. Because it is a racing title. So it will often get misplaced. Or, or sorry, mispriced. That's a common thing that happens. I see it happen with Need for Speed all the time. One of my Need for Speed games, I was able to get for $5 from an actual retro game store where they typically know what the games are worth. Well, this store owner had it in the $5 section because guess what? It probably was $5 at one point. This is a $50 game now. 50 freaking dollar game. Need for Speed. Most wanted for the 360. I paid $5 for one of my copies. 
because it's a racing game. Store owner looked at it, said, oh, racing game? What's that worth, five bucks? Racing games aren't worth anything. Five dollars. Well, this is a game that you might be able to find. If you see this game sitting on a shelf in a pawn shop, and you see it for cheap, pick it up right away. Another beautiful chart. Holy hell, this game's getting expensive. <laughs> I probably, I haven't looked at this one in a while. Probably last time I looked at it. Yeah, it was about 25 bucks. January 2020. Mm -hmm. It was probably $25, $30 game back then. Wow. Oh, and look at this. Okay. This, this is close enough to an example of a coiling. This sort of thing can happen in, in stocks. Let's just, let's just pretend that this extends out even further. See how it's going up and down? So between, let's say, December 2021 and today, it's just been going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. This little coil, this little price range. It's, it's uh, stuck in this little price range, but it's coiling up and down, up and down. What typically happens when something coils for a long enough period of time, eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to explode it's it's like you know you know it can only coil for so long before the coil just explodes out you can only put the pressure on for so long and then just uncoils and explodes and when it explodes out when a stock is doing that it will typically explode to the upside or explode to the downside meaning this is no small move it's not just gonna oh it's just gonna move up a little bit no 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 when it moves up it's gonna freaking explode and i could absolutely see that happening here so see this move from 20 to about freaking $60? That type of move could happen. When, when this moves, it's probably going to make a huge jump, huge leap. It's going to go from uh, roughly you know, $45 on the chart here to $85 or $100. Bucks. And that's on the chart. And so when we look at the prices down here, yeah, I mean, your new minimum is going to be $100 bucks at some point. There's no question. This game's easily going to 100 Look at these sold listings down here. Oh, look at this. Uh, read description. Okay, that means something's wrong with that one. <laughs> so that's why that one's so cheap. Let's find a good condition one. How about this one here? Oh, great shape. Says it right in the title. CIB, US version. Great shape and tested. Well, you get a premium for that, buddy. Great shape. 360 games are hard to find. I know because I'm always on the hunt for, for great shape games in good condition. $80 plus. Was there shipping on top of that? Was there taxes on top of that? Hundred dollar game. Hundred frickin' dollars. And you could have got this for about 15 bucks. Nobody wanted this game. Nobody knew it even existed. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, look, the further we get down November, cheaper numbers. We're seeing 40s. 40s all the way down to November, October. At least you could see the number four. And look, we're creeping up. Where'd all the fours go? Late November, all the fours are disappearing. December, I see one four. Okay, that's not bad. But it's not, you're not seeing very many, buddy. Now all of a sudden we're getting 80s, we're getting 70s, we're getting 60s. Higher highs, higher lows. And it's coiling. That's a coiling chart, buddy. I think that's going to coil to the upside. Great looking chart. Number 46. We got Naruto Rise of a Ninja. And guess what? You, you already know, guys. You already freaking know. What's that say? Hard to see. 360 exclusive. That's what it says. You're not going to find this on your PS3. You're sitting there thinking, oh, I can get that on my PS3. No, you can't. No, you can't. And that is why the 360 is one of the best consoles ever made. PS3's got exclusives, well, so does the 360. This game came out in 2007 and is widely said to be one of the best Naruto games ever made. There are two games in particular, two Naruto games, that are said to be the best Naruto games ever made. This right here is one of them. It has a major flaw, though. And that is the fact that it is not backwards compatible. And that will show in the price. That will show in the price chart. This, I believe if this game was backwards compatible, it would already be double what it's selling at right now. 
And yeah, this is a little niche because you got to be a Naruto fan. So not everyone's going to be into this. But this is the most unique Naruto game ever made. That's actually really good. The game was far ahead of its time. It's basically an action RPG fighting game. So it's predominantly a fighting game. But there are action RPG elements to the game. And platforming and exploration aspects of the game. That are not found in any other Naruto game. And because of these features and these elements. It feels like it's more than a fighting game. So it's often called an action RPG because that's what it feels like. It did make an initial move up as more and more people realize what this is. So I myself am a great example. I had never heard of this game previously. I didn't know about this game back in 2007. Well, now people know about it. They're learning more and more people are learning about it, including myself. I only just found out about this probably in the last two years, let's say. Maybe three. Maybe four. I didn't know about it back in 2019, though I can tell you that. And yeah, it had an initial massive jump where the price quadrupled for Bagger, where we went from 10 to 40 bucks. Okay? That's a, that's a big move for a 360 game. Especially this early. Right? That That's a big move. That's wave one. That's a wave one move. Phase one move. That's what, we, that's what we're all experiencing right now. We're at the phase one. Hell, some games have moved on to phase two. Well, right now it's looking for a floor. So it appears to have found that floor around the $30 level. Okay, remember, the chart's not always entirely accurate. So yeah, 21 bucks on the chart. But what are the recent sold listings? You're looking at an average, let's say 30 bucks. See, 38 bucks, 33 bucks, 30 bucks, 33, 20. $40 back in January. Well, what, two weeks ago? This game sells all day, every day, it looks like. Tons of sales in January. So it's a sought after title. That's what that means. It's very sought after. People want to buy the game, they're interested in the game. And it's not so rare that you can't get your hands on one, because that can happen as well. But typically that'll mean the price will be at $500 at that point. <laughs> so, yeah, we're looking at a nice $30 game. It's looking for a bottom. That's what it's looking for. So this is a fairly cheap game. And if you're an Naruto fan, this is something that you might want to consider adding to your collection. If this type of game interests you, take a look at it and ask yourself, do you think this could realistically go to $50, $60? And do you want to pay 30 today or 69 tomorrow in the future? That's what you got to ask yourself. Is this going to 200? Not likely. Not realistically, no. But could it go to $60? $69? $50? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I just about guarantee it's going there. Freaking guarantee it, buddy. Is it going to 100? Yeah, maybe. Pending inflation, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Pending, you know, we're not talking Black Swan events. Leave the Black Swan events out. Don't know what a Black Swan event is. I leave those out of these videos. We're not, we're not talking 1929 market crashes, etc. And even if we get a 1929 market crash, guess what? We're still talking long term, you freaking morons. What happened after 1929 market crash? Market went through one of the biggest booms in history. Stocks go up, stocks, stocks go down. That's how it works. They go up, they go down. They go up, they go down. And that's what leads us to number 47. You already know, guys. Another Xbox 360 exclusive. You already know. Naruto Broken Bond. The Broken Bond. This is the direct sequel Coming out one year later, in 2008. Oh, frig. CIB, of course. Great condition. I don't remember where I bought this, to be honest. I might have got it in a private auction group, or I got it on eBay. 
I don't remember. No point fiddling around with this one, guys. Let's just pull up that chart. And as you can see, this one is a lot pricier. It's looking for a bottom as we can speak. It had it, it had that huge run up, about 15 bucks to $50. Huge run up, just like the other Naruto game. But it hasn't come down as far. Okay, it's looking for a bottom around $40, $50. Look at these, look at these sold listings. 50, 53, 43, $60, $67, $50, 63, 53, 47, 71. And wow, look at that trend. I mean, you could just scroll down back to November. That's as far as down as we can go. And you can see the price going up. 38, 30. You can't even see, see 30s no more. 30s are gone, buddy. The last 30 was November 10th. Do you see the number three? Okay, there's one number three. That one don't count. <laughs> that was probably disc only. Or piss poor condition. 40s. From there, we hit 40s, 60s. Now the new bottom is 40. Look at that, $80. Free shipping, so that's 80 bucks on the button. $60, 40 40 I don't see no 30s no more. 26 that's probably an inaccurate listing. I can just about guarantee that. 60 We're hitting 60s. We're hitting the, the new floor is quickly turning into the $60 level. That's what it looks like to me, buddy. So let's just say 50 bucks. There's your new floor. About fifty dollars to get this shipped to your to your house. Fifty bucks Canadian. So it's looking for a bottom. Do you think that this is going to continue to trend higher? All things considered, because guess what? This game right here is better than the previous game. It's better than Rise of the Ninja. Many will tell you that this game right here is Rise of the Ninja. On steroids. And I'll go one further. I will tell you right now. The Broken Bond is Rise of the Ninja. Everything improved. More characters. Way more characters. 30 characters, but I think that includes DLC characters. 30, char 30 playable characters. It's Rise of the Ninja with new features. That's what it is. Great, great game to play on two-player two. Oh, and I forgot to mention the best part about these games. I forgot to mention the best part. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. The fighting system is different than any other Naruto game. Because you perform jutsus with the thumbstick. So you're doing hand signs. So you, your thumbstick, you have to memorize the, the hand signs. That's how you perform special jutsu. So you're, you're doing the hand signs. It's mimicking the hand signs. You're role-playing doing the hand signs with the thumbstick. Freaking genius. If you're a Naruto fan, by default, you have to own those games. If you don't own those games, you're not a Naruto fan. Transformers War for Cybertron. This is one of the best Transformers games ever made in history to this very day. I am recording this January of 2024. This game came out in 2010, yet it is one of the best. So many will tell you it is the second best. Some might tell you it is the, the best. This game was very well reviewed, but I think it was a forgotten gem. Not only was it a forgotten gem, from the time it had come out. Just people kind of forgot about it. But not everyone knew about it. Back then. Including myself. I didn't know. I didn't know it was good. I, did, I don't even think I knew about it. In general. And back then I wouldn't have necessarily sought after a Transformers game. But if somebody were to, to have approached me back in 2010. And, and told me about the game. And said that it's this amazing masterpiece. Because guess what? The Transformers games... Prior to this, were not all that great. In fact, the one bef released prior to this, Revenge of the Fallen, I think it's called, it wasn't very good at all. <laughs> it it kind of sucked. So probably when this came out, people didn't, they thought it was going to suck, like the previous one. Or that it would be, you know, average, mediocre, you know, okay, like the uh, Transformers the Game, based on the movie that came out. 
they might have thought, ah, it'd just be, it'll be like that one. Eh, I think I'll pass this time around. You know, pretty good game. I think I'll pass, though. That's probably what happened. Well, it turns out this is one of the best games ever made. The chart proves it, guys. You don't believe me? Well, the chart says otherwise. You're sitting at home, oh, that game sucks. Well, chart says otherwise, buddy. The people have spoken. What makes the price go up is supply and demand. Price goes up when, when demand is greater than supply. That's what happens. And at a certain point, the price can, can come down. As supply comes on the market, well, I'm not going to sell you my game for 50 bucks. I, you know, I'm a pretty hardcore collector, though, so my threshold's going to be pretty high. But if the price goes to 500 probably still not going to sell it, but I'll consider it at least. That's supply coming back onto the market at a certain price. Somebody's willing to sell. So maybe the, this guy who just sold this copy for 53 bucks, he probably, probably would have no intention to sell it to you for 5 bucks. But hey, price is at 50 I could use some money in my pocket. I'll sell you, I'll, I'm willing to sell my copy all of a sudden. Supply and demand causes the prices to move. This is about as good of a chart as you can get straight line up. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. I don't even need to explain. Plenty of copies in the $60 range, some going into the $70 range. Do you think that this trend is going to continue in the long run? Because I think it is. It might even be finding a nice little bottom around this $40, $50 level right now. Maybe it'll coil, coil up for a little bit. But this is what you call a hidden gem. That's gaining more and more popularity. That's what this is. That's all it is. This was perfection. This is the very first game that they perfected the formula. And that's why it's going up. 10 hours of single player campaign gameplay here, guys. The transformations are absolutely seamless. Very easy to transform from your robot form to your typically a vehicle form. Whether you're flying, driving around, it's very seamless. They do it to perfection. The game is perfection. So what was previously a forgotten game is no longer forgotten. Is this a great candidate for a $200 game? Would this turn into the next Spider-Man? Absolutely. Absolutely it will. You know, we're getting $500 games in the future. Plenty of them. Which ones are going to go there? We don't know yet. Could it be one of these Transformers games? Yeah, absolutely it could. Maybe not this one. But how about number 50? How about number 50? Transformers Fall of Cybertron. This has a slip cover, by the way. If you want CIB, you need the slip cover. Slip cover increases the value of the game significantly. Oh, and guess what? Remember that pawn shop I told you about? I paid three dollars for this. Three bucks. Your average person would have walked in there. Your collector that doesn't have a keen eye, they would have walked into that pawn shop back then, 2020. Let's say 2021 even. They would have walked in there and said, "Oh, this is three dollars." That's worthless. I don't want that. As soon as you slap a $60 price tag on a game like this, all of a sudden everybody wants it. That's the problem with your average untrained eye, your untrained collector. They don't want it until the value has already gone up. That's the problem. What you need to be doing is buying the games before the value goes up. Before it goes to $60. Transformers Fall of Cybertron came out in 2012. North America, 2012. Look at that beautiful chart. Oh, look at that. Wave 1 move up. Look at that. It coiled, guys. Look at that coiling. $12.99 in January of 2020. 12 bucks. Rocketed up. Doubled. It doubled. 22 bucks. let's say. 20 bucks. It was finding a floor, it found a floor. You might even call that coiling for a little bit. You might even call this part of the same coil. Let's just say $20 to $30 range. Slight move up, it's coiling. Up, down, up, down, up, down. 
trying to find a mark. Does it go to 30? Does it come back down to 20? What's it going to do? What's it going to do? It was trying to decide, you know, do I go back down to 20? Well, when it finally finished that coil, it exploded to the upside. Now the new floor, good luck getting it for 40 bucks, buddy. That's the new, that's the new bottom. 40 bucks, and you're probably not even going to get one for that price. Because let's look at the recent sold listings. You're looking at 60 bucks there, 50 bucks there, $70 there with the slip cover. Look at that, bitch. CIB with the slip cover. You want, you want CIB, you're going to want that slip cover. Do you, and if you want the slip cover, you're going to pay up for it. You're going to be paying up a lot of money. Oh, yeah. A lot of $60 price ranges. Oh, we can only go back to December. So this is highly sought after. Yeah, this game, which makes sense because when you get a chart like that, that just explodes up, it, it's gaining popularity. It means people want the game. Did anybody want the game down here? Unlikely. <laughs> Everybody wants it now because more and more people are learning about it. It might not even be that nobody wanted it back then, but nobody knew about it, right? You, you, can't, you can't buy it if you don't know about it. I didn't know about it. 2012, that's a, that's a pretty late release, guys. That is a late release title. Do you think that this could go to 200? If Spider-Man can go to 200, Transformers can go to 200. I'm telling you that right now. Because the very last game on the list is X-Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition. It's not a, it's not a um, exclusive. It is on the PS3 as well. X-Men Origins. This is the very best X-Men game ever made. CIB. This game came out in 2009. Activision title. Delisted. You can't get this digital no more. They lost the rights to it. You want this game, you're going to get it physical. You want this game right here, physical only. You will never find this digital ever again. It will never be re-released. They lost the rights to it. It ain't coming back. I'm telling you that right now. Here's what I like about this game. This game was known for its pure brutality. It reminds me of the Punisher for the Xbox slash PS2. Very different games. Style of gameplay is very different. But in terms of blood, gore, and brutality, they are similar. The 360 version is the better of the versions. I think these... The non-uncaged edition was on your PS2. Nobody cares about that game. So the 360 and the PS3 versions are the definitive versions to play. And this chart is looking absolutely beautiful. Straight lineup. Straight freaking lineup. And that's what's been happening to 360 games. Rare and uncommon games. This is what happens. Highly sought after games that are not super common, that are not your Halos and your Call of Duties, this is what's going to happen. The market just needs to, one, wake up to the existence of the game, and two, the games need to hit a certain age where people that grew up on these consoles have disposable income. And people need to learn about these games. And sometimes, you know, obviously YouTube makes that easy for people to find out about these games nowadays. We didn't have YouTube back in the day. Sells all day, very, very sought after. But as you can see, the, the trend is climbing up. I don't think you're going to see these, these threes anymore. And this is just back in December. It's trying to find a new floor. Look at all these much higher numbers. 40s, 40s, 50s, 50s, 40s, 60s, 60, 60, 40, 53, 40. The, three, the threes are disappearing. Look at this. We're, we're, on, the chart, on the chart, it's, it's bottoming out. Actually, still trending higher. These are, these are still higher highs and higher lows. But it might flatline for a while. It might find some flooring around that, you know, $40, $50 level. 
But do you think it's coming down to 10? I'm telling you right now, it's never coming down to 10. Never. That's the other thing about retro games, guys, in general. They'll keep up with inflation as well. You need a hedge against inflation. You don't want to be in cash in an inflationary environment. You might be saying, oh, well, what about when interest rates are high? You're still not keeping up with the real rate of inflation. Okay, whatever the government tells you, that's not the real rate. Uh, go look up shadow stats if you want the real freaking rate. Okay, they change how they calculate inflation to make you think it's a low number of inflation. To make you think, oh, look at that. The inflation rate's only 5%, 3%, 2%. No, it's not. They manipulate those numbers. How about we use the same system on how they calculated inflation back in 1980, 1970, 1990? They keep changing it because that's how they can manipulate the numbers. They'll just take certain things out. Oh, well, let's uh, take oil out. Let's take tires on your car out. Oh, that, that used to be one of the things that we used to calculate the inflation rate. Uh, let's take that one out. Let's take that one out. The prices went up too high. We need, we need lower numbers. Now, they do things to manipulate the numbers, but video games will keep up with inflation, retro games. So if you end up in a hyperinflation environment, uh, I'm not going to be selling you my Wolverine game for, for $50 in a hyperinflation environment. <laughs> You're going to be paying 5000 for it at that point, meaning, in the, meaning that 5000 would be the new equivalent of 50 Anyways, guys, going on a bit of a rant here. This has been a very long video. If you enjoyed this content, if you enjoyed what you just saw, please smash the like button. It helps with the algorithm. Consider subscribing to the channel. I got more episodes on the way. We're going all the way to 69 Xbox 360 games that are going up in value.